going. Okay, we are live. Uh, just wait for five seconds. There's a little latency issue that we are. I'll doing. I'll do the introduction. Don't worry. Okay, guys. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Atul from Team K Two Academy. Can someone confirm me that you can um hear me clearly? Uh, let me start my webcam as well uh, because I don't do that. Let me start and see. This time I can do my webcam and say start cam. Can you all hear me and see loud and clear? Let me know. Um, can someone confirm me that my messages are uh, screen is moving? Yes, Venkat, thank you. Can confirm me or uh, someone in the social channel? Can you confirm me? Loud and clear, great, Venkat, thank you. And my screen is moving as well. Second, third. Sumit, can you unmute yourself and tell me that um, you are on GoToWebinar clear? Yes. Okay. Thanks. And are we on um, social channel as well? Are we live? Shivansh, can you confirm? Yes, we are live, sir. We are coming oh, in brilliant. comments. Um, from okay. Platforms. And I think we are waiting for Amit uh, once uh, he comes on. Uh, can you, Shivan, um, can you submit? Can you call Amit and make sure uh, give him the password and he can log in and join the GoTo webinar as well, please, while we are doing this. Okay, guys. Hi, everyone. This is Atul from Team K21 Academy, and today we are here for. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Foundation. And first of all, sincere apologies. I had some technical issues. We had a technical issues, but hopefully we are uh, we should be all okay. There might be slight background noise at my side, but again, um, hopefully you should not uh, feel or recognize. But next time on next Saturday, which we happens, um, which is on 7th of August, we should be a little bit more in a place where um, we, so sincere apologies for that if you see the background noise. Uh, this is we are here for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, my name is Atul. With me, I have Amit, who he's also hitting some technical issues, but he should be joining here shortly. Now, quick housekeeping. You all are muted from our side, but you can have an opportunity to ask questions by unmuting yourself. And um, oh no, not unmuting. Sorry, you can't unmute, but you can ask questions in the chat window, and my team will be answering questions. Now, if you're watching this as a recorded, uh, you can still ask questions. I'll try to answer. Uh, my team will be there to answer you. Now, if you have not yet registered, you can register for this class by going to k21academy.com forward slash 1001085. It's two hours per day. Today, we are going to be 1st of August. Today, it will be two hours 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. PST, 2.30 to 4.30 GMT, which is 3.30 to 5.30 UK time, which is uh, my British summer time, and 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. IST. Um, also, we'll be talking about 1001085, which is the Oracle Cloud Foundation certification. That's what we're going to cover. Um, now, um, this program is worth 297, but you're getting it absolutely free as a bonus if you're part of my GoToWebinar. Uh, sorry, if you're part of our Oracle Cloud Infrastructure OCI, Go to webinar at, oh, sorry, uh, on and you guys are on go to webinar. Now, this is the agenda going to be looking like. So, first, which is today, we are going to cover cloud concepts. In that, I'll tell you what we are going to cover, and we'll cover a second more topic, which is OCI foundation or fundamental block. If there's any, um, if for some reason, if you can't finish all of that today, we might be pushing it to the day two. And on day two, which is 7th of August, we'll be covering same time. But Saturday, we'll be covering OCI core concepts or core services covering identity and access management, compute, and networking. Then on third day, third, which is eighth, again Sunday, next Sunday, we'll be covering OCI core services, which is covering storage and databases. And then fourth day, final day, which will be covering, um, again, that's a Sunday, we'll be covering OCI security model, pricing, and billing. So let me quickly walk you through in terms of what we are doing and why we are doing. So this is a Oracle's cloud certification path. And at the bottom that you see, it's a foundation or beginner level certification, which is 1001085. Uh, what this certification is, we'll I'll talk to in a minute, but this is what we'll be covering. So by end of next week or so, you should be able to learn enough that you can clear the certification 1001085 and your Oracle Cloud basic concept should be clear. Then 
uh, ultimately we want to go here which is oracle cloud infra architect which is an associate level certification 101072 now um, this is what will make you ready for the job and this certification which is 101072 will clear the design and implementation aspect of your oracle cloud journey so and that is what ultimately will be aiming towards and i'll give you at end of this my presentation today for first 30 minutes or so i'll give you how you can access a, a free class on that 101072 now um, first of all those who are from social channel let me know you are all um, you can hear me and also if you've not introduced yourself go and introduce yourself and tell a little bit more about yourself um, also let me know shivans from my time is it all okay on social channel is it like um um all am i still loud and clear yes you are sir. brilliant brilliant well done thank you okay so let's look at who this certification is for so the certification exam which is a foundation level or beginners level certification which is 101085 is targeted for both candidate both technical and non-technical background and technical again you don't you don't need to be an expert in that uh, but as long as some basic uh, concepts will be covering here so foundation level knowledge and it's a precursor for oracle cloud infrastructure which is the underlying infrastructure which we'll learn in a minute here it's not mandatory but it's good to have the certification now there are five core concepts or five core topics you should be learning which is cloud concepts which is today we are going to cover that what what you see here hold on one second um so this is what you see on top right here i don't know I, uh, my mice was here so this is what we're going to cover today and then second module is fundamental blocks which is again we will cover today then core services there are five core services which is identity as i said earlier and then uh, which will be covering on day two and day three because it's core services are the big topic and then final day um fourth day we'll be covering the security and compliance and pricing support and billing and that's where we'll be finally preparing for this exam uh, so that you can write this exam 1001085 now uh, the oracle released 2021 version which is year 2021 latest version so we'll be preparing you for the latest 2021 version uh, here so first as i said is cloud concepts and fundamental block again at the bottom of this there'll be a url which is day one registration and this is where you will be able to find the recording as well and now those who are part and but recording will be available for next couple of days but those who are part of my program paid program which is um oracle cloud infrastructure uh, architect associate or cloud dba or integration cloud and other trainings on oracle cloud you'll be having a uh, longer or lifetime access to these recordings so we'll begin with on cloud concepts like cloud characteristics what is cloud the properties that make cloud so famous that everyone is moving towards cloud now at then second we are going to also cover about cloud service model and this is one of the fundamental thing you should be knowing what is infrastructure service software as a service and platform as a service now some of these things you might know but we'll give you a different spin or different concept like telling you about examples of software as a service so this is an example of what does infrastructure as a service means platform as a service examples and then software as a service example and we are going to do it mix it with oracle as a flavor uh, also we'll be also looking at cloud deployment model which is public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud and we are going to go quick on that because some of you guys already know but amit will cover enough so that you can understand these concepts we'll also uh, when we do our higher level programs a lot of guys get confused an example of private cloud or hybrid cloud so we'll be putting an example on something called oracle's clouded customer or private cloud called accelerator cloud service or oracle how does that cloud at customer or private cloud is implemented which is oracle accelerator cloud service um, if you're not if you're an oracle dba this is what you should be focusing on uh, here also we'll be looking at oh by the way on this point i want to highlight again if you're a dba make sure to pay special attention because i based in uk i have done seen a lot of implementations happening and my colleagues and friends in us and also amit will bring his stories 
of implementation on database part of Accelerator Clouded customer. Uh, so there are a lot of projects happening on that particular domain. Now, I hope I'm not going too fast. Can someone confirm me in the chat window that I'm not going too fast? It's all pace is all fine. Um, okay, I can see Amit as well um, here. So can someone in the chat window confirm that pace is not too fast? Pace is good. Anmol is saying all good. Thanks, Balakrishna. Thank you. Okay, so as I said, if you are an apps DBA or database administrator, Oracle database, look pay special attention to the database part, which will be a dedicated, will be covering here on day three, if I'm not wrong, with attention to Exeter clouded customer. Then, oh, hold on. Yeah, then we'll be looking at fundamental OCI building blocks, which is what is a region, what is availability domain, and what are the fault domain. Uh, here again these things will be important when you're doing high availability and disaster recovery this is a, another pictorial representation of regions availability do, domain and fault domain and how they play based on the architecture deployment do you do single region multiple domain you can also do multiple regions you can also do single region but single availability domain and so on and then we'll also share a step-by-step -step guide on creating a cloud account, an Oracle cloud account. Also, if you have not yet created a cloud account, I highly recommend you to go to this URL, which is k21academy.com forward slash cloud 01. Create a cloud account. We, what we have done is I've done a video as well as a step-by-step -step guide. You can download it from here. So k21academy.com forward slash cloud 01. Now, when you enter your name and email address, it will ship you the guide. Uh, and you can use that follow that guide or you can use video given on this page so that you can create an account now account creation is quite simple but we see a lot of guys struggle on creating an account um, and that is because you need one is credit card and you also need a phone number and a um, email address now credit you sh if you have created an account in past then you should always use a different phone number and different email address and a diff different credit card. Otherwise, it probably will fail creating an account. Second thing which you have noticed is that um, the account, sorry, the credit card that you use, especially for those who are from India or Asian countries, the credit card should have an international payment enabled. So pay attention to that as well. Now, um, yeah, so make sure that create this account using this URL, which you can do it after the class. Now we'll also look at OCI consoles. How do you, the console look like? Once you have created an account, how does OCI console look like? And then different ways to create your OCI or manage your OCI resources, which one is using uh, this uh, OCI console, second is using command line, or third using a REST API. So all of that we are going to cover it in day one. Then day two, which is uh, going to be on 7th of August, uh, we are going to cover the OCI core services. In that, we are going to look at identity and access management, things like users, groups, policies, compartments, and pay special attention if on compartment and policies, uh, especially if you're coming from a security background, or if you have, if you want delegated access, which means not everyone should have every access your junior resources should have only or your dba should only have database access your network guys should only have network access and so on then we'll be talking about another component called network and this is where i see especially if you're from an infrastructure background or those dbas or my apps dba colleagues and this is where you struggle a lot so make sure understand the concept about virtual cloud network which is nothing but vpc if you're coming from aws background or if you're coming from um, as your background, it's a virtual network, VNet. Or if you're coming from an um, on-premise world, it's a um, virtual lens or VNet or, or networks or, or virtual networks. Then subnets, which are a smaller network. Then we'll be talking about different things like firewall, load balancers, gateways, which is internet gateway to connect to internet, dynamic routing gateway to connect to your on-premise and the way to connect to on-premises like IPSC VPN and fast connect. Now again, um, also how do you connect to the object storage from backup purpose? And that is using service gateway. 
Now again, I'm going, I know I'm going a little bit fast on this, but this is to get you glimpse of a teaser on what's coming. Amit is going to go and explain these concepts in a minute. Then we'll be looking at different components or sorry, compute options, like what is a bare metal? What is a virtual machine? What is a dedicated host virtual machines? Then we'll be looking at what are the containers, which is Docker containers, if you've heard of, or Kubernetes, and then functions which are serverless. So these are the different compute options available. So that's day two. Then we'll go day three, which is our eighth Sunday. And that is where we'll be covering two other topics, which is one is storage. And within storage, you have object storage. You have the block storage, you have file storage. And these are mainly three categories of storage, which you'll find in any cloud or in on-premise. And implementation of that on Oracle Cloud, you have block volumes, file storage service, object storage. So we'll be talking about these. Then if you're a DBA, how many are DBAs here? Let me know. How many are DBAs or apps DBAs? Let me know. Let me see as well. Uh, because we'll be covering these. How many are DBAs and apps DBAs here? And if you're on social, let me know about that as well. Okay. Uh, let me read out the questions and say, okay, good. So DBA, 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 good. Anmol is DBA. Uh, Vasuk, there are a lot of DBAs. Anyone who is not DBA. Monali is DBA. Brilliant. Brilliant. So you are in for a treat because Oracle recently released a new certification 101093. We will be talking about that, but Oracle have released a new databases and that you'll be talking about so autonomous databases. You might have already heard of uh, then Exadata cloud service within Exadata. You have Exadata cloud service, Exadata clouded customer, virtual machine DB system, bare metal DB system. And then there's the, another concept of external databases, which is managing your databases, which are not on cloud, which could be your on premise or which could be in another cloud, how do you simply managing them? Then two new services, which is MySQL and NoSQL. So if you're part of our database to cloud DBA program, um, you will be going detail in detail about MySQL and NoSQL, which is 101093 certification. And then of course, your Exadata clouded customer. And this is where we see a lot of demand on clouded customer part or request coming. So Exadata cloud service, which is deploying the same Exadata which you have heard of X8 M or X8, X7, X6 Exaditas, whatever you were doing on premise, but same thing on cloud and how these are implemented Exadata cloud service. Now, again, those are part of the database Oracle DBA to Oracle cloud DBA program. Um, there's a dedicated module separately will be covered on Exadata cloud service. And this is another which I was talking about Exadata cloud at customer, which is generation to generation to uh, Exadata cloud, but it customer promises. So a lot of guys were saying, oh, we are a bank or we are a telecom. We are not allowed uh, to or we are very sensitive about data. And this is where you put Exadata cloud at customer and a lot of these complementations happening in UK and US and a lot of that work will is going to come into uh, wherever you are, maybe mi Middle East, maybe India, maybe um, uh, Singapore, Australia uh, or Europe, wherever you are, you'll be seeing these implementations happening. Now on day three, we are going to open up or tell you about those who are not yet part of cloud DBA program, how to attend a free class on upgrading from Oracle DBA to a Oracle Cloud DBA. In that, we're talking about three certifications. The new certification, which has come 101093, which is database cloud service on version 2021. Then 10931, but 2021 version of autonomous databases. And then 101044, which is migrating your database workloads onto cloud. So we'll be talking about that and we'll give a free class as well. So that was about day three. Now in day four, we are going to talk about all about security, pricing and budgeting. In that we'll be talking about shared responsibility model. We'll be talking about security services. What are the different ways to secure Oracle Cloud and at different level of security. We'll be also talking about new concept which was which came last year, but it has started picking up now, which is security zone, which is you you mark something as a, under a secure zone and then you even someone accidentally also will it will not let you open up configuration unless you manually go and change it from a secure zone to unsecure zone 
so we'll be talking about security zone as well then pricing especially those who are non-technical background or those who look after the uh, the pricing things so there are three different pricing model we'll be looking at pricing model as well also cost analysis how does costing look like uh, or how do you estimate the amount of money you're going to spend or how do you budget your spending on oracle cloud how much you have used how do you do the analysis of that we're going to cover so in this foundation we are going to cover basic but in oci architect which is those who are part of 101072 we are going to go deep into that um billing and archiving so as i said um the recording will be available on the portal k29 academy.com forward slash 101085 so make sure you register also sorry guys as i said i'm in a place where um i'm in right now central london so sorry for that uh, background noise and this was a little bit unplanned so uh, so the recording will be available on 101085 page uh, but only for a few days those who are part of the program you will have on your standard place a replay will be available for you for lifelong on that also any question answers that comes will be covered here as well or will be given to you now we always get excellent feedback on amit session and uh, i know he's a brilliant instructor I'll, i'm going to bring him a, a here in a minute but we get always brilliant feedback on the these sessions and we want to make sure that whatever time you spend it's well spent here on your time so at some point in time maybe um, later today or maybe next week um, or through email i'll ask you to review the uh, the session and i would love to get five star and um, if you like the session maybe do do rate us on google if you like that we have 300 plus ratings of 4.8 which is uh, i think that's remarkable uh, on what we've achieved so big thank you if you have rated us five star in in past now before i hand it over to amit i wanted to give one or two tasks for you first task is uh, that we have a youtube channel we have i think i've just told by my team that we crossed 20000 subscribers i think a couple of days back uh, so if you have not yet subscribed to our youtube channel on a weekly basis we are doing one or two cloud videos um earlier we used to do just oracle but recently we have added uh, aws and azure and docker and kubernetes and whatever is hot in the market so look at that k2academy.com forward slash youtube now also before i as i said introduce myself i want to introduce i want you to introduce yourself and tell me are you a beginner in oracle cloud then type p if you're working on oracle cloud i've logged in cloud and you're working and playing a little bit type intermediate or if you're already working type expert or oh, sorry if you're already certified then write expert e so type b i or e and let me know in the chat window what is your background uh, and so that i understand a little bit better for you with you so b for beginner i for intermediate and e for expert and i'm going to chat look at some of the messages um on here and she wants let me know if when people comment so i can and any questions you might have for me uh, in a minute now, for those who don't know me uh, this is me atul i have 21 years experience i'm based in uk uh, i'm an oracle ace which are these oracle aces awarded by oracle and i'm among the first few oracle aces which, uh, who got back in 2006 when this a start program started um, i'm also author of book i'm based in uk um, and i have done some of the biggest migrations here in uk so whatever you're going to learn this um it's coming from real experience i've also migrated i'm just uh, again this is not to brag or show off but to give you that whatever you're going to learn here is coming from real experience i'm also part of i was part of one of the biggest migrations of oracle e-business suite oracle financial system with more than 50 terabyte of data with the shortest possible downtime using hybrid data guard those are part of our apps gba e-business suite or database trainings on cloud will you'll be sharing some of the case studies some of you have already seen that but amit will also bring his own expertise here but what i'm most proud of is helping eight and a half thousand individuals like you to learn cloud and cloud native technologies and if you're one of them big big thank you for being part of k20 academy also the main i think i would say is also introduce amit who's brilliant brilliant i've been amit and i go as long as 19 years when i first met him in in 
um, in my first job. So um, he's also certified in pretty much every certification you can think of on Oracle. He's been teaching our Oracle Cloud for a number of years, but the most important is he doesn't just teach, but has real experience. And he's doing some of the biggest migrations as well with me and uh, with his customers on migrating. He also teaches our Terraf Terraform um, automation courses and other courses as well. Uh, so you're in for a tweet um, and, and trust me, he'll, he'll, he'll have make it superb here. Also, um, we have lots and lots of success stories and some of you guys might be already here, but I can think of is Sandeep, Akhlesh, Ashwini, Ronald, Virendra, Sanjukta, Saurabh, and I know a lot of guys are already here who have got a result. So if you're one of them, uh, just wanted to say thank you if you've shared your story because your story has inspired a lot of others. And I take my inspiration from you guys as well, because when you put us on, like, you know, you ask tough questions, you ask, you know, all interesting questions in your cloud journey, it helps us to go and find that answers for you. So big, big congratulations for that. And for those who are not here yet on success stories, I want you to uh, get a result. And result could be maybe getting certified, maybe getting a job, maybe getting a or higher paid job, or maybe doing your project as well. Now, as I said, we have lots and lots of success stories on this here, but I want to read out some of them here. And I don't know the name in front. Okay, I, I think I need to read out uh, some of the questions here is Sita Kant uh, for who cleared this 101072. Another one here is Siddha, Siddharth uh, here and Farooq, and then I said, I can go on and on and on on this list. Um, there are a lot of guys who have cleared the certification. I want you to take this platform, which is for foundation as a starting stone, and then make sure you certify yourself on an architect level, because that's where a lot of job opportunities are available. So as I said, ultimate is we are starting here, but make sure that you certify next two, three months, one the zero, one zero seven two. Recent, like, uh, Oracle was supposed to release a 2021 version yes, like last month, uh, July, but and we were waiting and waiting and waiting, but they have not yet released, but it might come, I've heard, it might come in next one or two or days or maybe this week or next week. As soon as the 2021 version comes, we are ready from our side. Those are part of my um, 101072 program. We're almost ready. We're just waiting for as soon as new exam comes, uh, material everything is there will be uh, will ourselves will be going through that certification and then we'll be asking you to um or we'll be telling you how to prepare for that but i've already done based on what i know from my um uh, colleagues at oracle or friends at oracle oh by the way i'm not from oracle but i worked i work very closely with uh, oracle and team um so this is the eight week roadmap i recommend or we recommend uh, for you to go through if you're not oracle certified uh, oracle cloud certified if you are certified, congratulations, prepare for the new version which is coming. The new topics have come, especially Kubernetes, containers, MySQL, NoSQL, those topics. But Amit will be definitely helping you, pointing you. Those who are already part of the program, big, big congratulations. Those who are not, um, this is my, uh, you know, I wanted you to come and join this journey with us on uh, becoming an Oracle Cloud Architect um on that and we'll be talking about that a little bit later but if you like if you want to become oracle cloud architect i would i run a, another class which is a roughly around 90 minute class which is um with me and amit k academycom forward slash oci02 we tell you about how to prepare for 101072 and currently uh, we are going to teach about the uh, existing program but as soon as the or ex as soon as the new program comes comes will be talking about the new program as well so um, in this class you'll be talking about both or about 101072 exam how to prepare for these exams uh, and what all things you should be learning so if you're interested you can attend it or register for a free class on k21 academy.com forward slash oci02 those who are already uh, on part of my certification program you don't need to worry about um the material is ready as i said uh, the minute uh, 1072 2021 version comes we'll be talking about that in the program no so that's pretty much from my side any questions for me let me know um and we'll be happy to help so let me pick up the any questions and then amit anything or she wants anything from your side and then i'd hand it over to amit uh guys anyone in the chat window in my group here okay uh, Sonia is saying oracle deployment background okay um 
currently on break brilliant sonia so you already have 12 uh, development background so for me if you're coming from a development background this one more certification i would suggest if you are a soa developer if you're a java developer if you are a uh, e-business suite developer uh, or if you're working as a oracle functional consultant techno functional consultant or sonia 101042 which is a oci architect certification 101042 um uh, Balakrishna is coming from SOA B2B. So 101042, if I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're already part of uh, but, um, 1042. Um, okay. Um, Rama Subramanam, if you're from an Oracle ERP functional consultant, make sure you, I, I hope you're already part of 101042. So attend that. Um, yeah. Um, anything else, um, Amit, which you can think of, which I missed, or um, um, my Shivansh, anything from your side? Any question for me? If not, Amit, I'm going to make you presenter. Let me know. Um, Amit, and then Amit, can you share your screen as well on not only just here, uh, but also on um, the tool that we use, StreamYard. I hope you're there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amit, sir, is here. OK, brilliant. Amit is, Amit is there. Uh, Amit, can you unmute and tell me? Oh, screen has been shifted to Amit. Brilliant. Um, uh, Amit, I think you need to change on, you need to go to the uh, home screen. Is it my screen, Noah? Yeah, Amit, I can see you. Brilliant, Amit. But I don't know whose screen is this. <laughs> Amit, is it my screen or your screen? It is Amit sir's screen, sir. Amit sir, you, so, Amit, you need, need to go to the presentation. PPT. Yeah. PPT. Okay, I can see a couple of questions. B E E expert, but I don't see any question on a social channel. Uh, there are some uh, from YouTube, sir. I can. Uh, if there's any question, out. otherwise I'll 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 pick them. Okay. Now I can see one. Suresh is saying I'm from a big data COE. Uh, how can I start? So I think probably if you're from big data background, uh, Suresh, you should be picking up um, what I call um, Oracle database part, Oracle database. PPT is not clear. Papa is saying PPT is not clear. I'm not sure why PPT is not clear. Papa is saying. Kipu is saying what is not working. I think it might be old one. Mm, how can I start, Suresh? Uh, for Oracle Apps technical, technical, which certification exam I need to write? So, Chandra, if you're an Oracle Apps Technical, 101042. 101042. Okay, with that, Amit, I'm going to hand it over to you. And if you can unmute yourself and let me know. Amit, if speaking, unable, unable to hear you. I think you do go, go to webinar and. Uh, Um, do we have all, all on here um, on uh, StreamYard as well? Am I audible to everyone? No, yes, yes you, you are. are. Finally. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finally able to make it. And uh, you're, going to, uh, you're going to buy a lot of drinks to me, Amit, because you're like, um, um, you came late and this was uh, our promise that you're going to, <laughs> whosoever comes late <laughs> comes to the party, okay? Absolutely. Okay. Sure. Great. Great. Okay. So just one more two minute. I'll take a few more questions have come. And what is the best, uh, Darshna is saying, um, what is the best Oracle Cloud certification for system administrators? Okay. So if you're a system administrator, uh, Darshna, you should be going for Oracle Cloud Infra Architect 101072. And Darshna is from our YouTube channel. Next is Prabiri saying, can we appear directly? Amit, can you go to full screen? Can you make it the full screen, your presentation on uh, on here? Yeah, and then there's a bottom, there's a um, stop sharing, there's a hide on notification here. Yeah, just one more minute, I'll begin. Now, Prabir is saying, can we directly appear for Oracle Cloud DB Architect certification or you need to do first foundation? So Oracle Cloud DB Architect, so there is a Oracle Cloud Architect, Pr Prabir, which is 101072 and within dba oracle dba or oracle databases there are three certifications 100931 sorry 101093 which is the latest scheme there's a 10931 which is for autonomous database and there's one more which is 101044 so we have two programs 
one program is for oracle cloud infra architect that we cover there um uh, for what we mentioned i like highlighted earlier there and second is from upgrading from dba to cloud dba which we'll be covering on day three uh, you don't need to be a foundation foundation will clear your concept but you can directly go to uh, the uh, right exam akash if you're from a network akash is from youtube channel he's asking i'm from a networking background what should i do for networking background oracle cloud infra architect 101072 Utpal is saying for a developer, Utpal, if you're a BI developer, you should be going Oracle Integration Cloud, which is um, Integration Cloud 101042. And there is, I think, um, OTBI, uh, which I don't know, which I don't do. Uh, next one, um, I think, Bhavesh, can you read out some questions for me, um, Utkash? Sorry, uh, Chivansh. Yeah, I'll, I'll read them out for you. Uh, okay, there is one from on our YouTube channel from Bhavesh Jain. Oracle developer, no cloud background. Is this the right course path to start? Uh, yes. Uh, so the foundation is what you should be doing. So definitely that's the right path. Yes. Okay. okay uh, um, next one, let me pick. Um, and you pick the next one after that. So OCI is very different from OCI. Uh, is OCI very different from that AWS or any other cloud infra platform? Will Amit be discussing generic cloud infra concept? delve into something oracle specific and differentiate it so right now our focus is just oracle cloud but he will give you the references because amit covers our terraform where we cover in in our terraform we cover both um, hold on one second just give me one second so in our terraform we cover uh, oracle cloud aws cloud and azure cloud so he knows all the three but he will wherever our references come amit is a good point can you cover uh, with respect to when we come networking here you say, for example, VPC, sorry, v, uh, um, VCN, then there we say VPC. So the concepts are same. If you know one cloud, picking Oracle cloud will be very easy for you. So the conceptually, the same things happen, but implementation slightly. Uh, uh, Iconic is saying, I'm from a JD background, uh, please guide. So anyone who is from a PeopleSoft, JD Edward, eBusiness Suite, working as an infrastructure administrator or an apps dba or administrator you should be going oci oracle cloud infrastructure because e-business suite or a databases or applications like jd edward people soft will run on top of uh, what you call your oracle cloud infrastructure let me be one or one or more um Srinivas is saying i'm an it manager with oracle hrms functional experience which will be the starting point if you're a hrms i think i would suggest you go for either uh, OCI architect, sorry, um, Oracle Integration Cloud 101042, or you should be going for some functional uh, Srinivas. This is good for you to understand the basic concepts, but I think you'd be much better 101042 or OCI architect. Now, why I'm taking these questions are because there are a couple of other guys from my um, Oracle Integration Cloud training program, and they are from a functional background. So, Oracle Integration Cloud 101042. Avamsi is saying again from YouTube, with only certification, can we get opportunity as we don't uh, have a real time experience? Okay, so if you do what I what I do, um, if you know enough right now, and if you complete all the hands on lab that we recommend, not as foundation program, but in OCI or DB to cloud DBA, getting a job is easy because I got my job in cloud back in 2014-15 uh, and i had no cloud experience but what i did was i flew from uk to us and learned directly from oracle product management team i paid a lot of money but i knew that um, that the knowledge will help so as long as it's not bookish knowledge you should bamsi you should don't be doing bookish knowledge make sure you perform the hands-on lab and if you have a hands-on lab and if you have the uh, if you've worked on what we teach you you should definitely be getting a job and if you're not then either your cv is not right or you're unable to communicate your value properly so you should get a job even if you don't have a real-time experience because the labs which are recommended in oci program should be done based on the real-time experiences okay um um sorry it's not 1043 mahesh okay let me pick up um oh, hold on there were a lot of questions and i'm mean, sorry for that um uh, let me pick up um, no worries one. okay uh these are these questions are good 
okay i think i've covered let me pick okay let me show it questions as well can you can you keep showing these questions um she wants as question comes akashali saying i'm from a networking background please start how to start so on akashali from a youtube on day two if i'm not wrong uh day two yeah day two or day three we are going to cover networking in oracle cloud which is um which is uh, vcn uh, subnets gateways um v uh, firewall load balancers all those things so that's what you should be picking up uh next one is uh manik hold on uh, show i'm from a java background where do i get started manik anand i think java if you're a developer background um that's a good question to be frank i, <laughs> I think you should be going on a developer side uh, which is oh you should be going for oracle integration cloud which is 1001042 k20academy.com forward slash uh, oic oracle integration cloud uh one one so k21academy.com forward slash oic one one which is a double which is a oracle integration cloud okay um next question is uh siva is saying what is big difference between aws and google cloud we are not covering either of them shiva so sorry for that we will be not be covering here um um on here today's class um okay i think i've already mentioned that uh, manikarant um our next question is about ajit is saying can doing any background i'm not sure uh, i've not seen the question correct guys uh siva is saying okay i think uh, guys those who are writing the questions uh make sure that you write the proper question because we get a lot of questions and i'll not be able to pick it if there's not fully built or fully drafted question um Mahesh is saying, "What is 101043?" Mahesh, sorry for that. I think it was either 101042, which is Oracle Integration Cloud, which is used to integrate your cloud with on-premise or cloud to cloud. Oracle has a lot of cloud, so within Oracle integration, cloud integrations or Oracle Cloud to Oracle eBusiness suite and so on. Um, Amit, the battery on my phone is low, so I can disconnect. If it disconnect, you can then directly start with there. The second certification is one zero zero one zero nine three, which is for DBAs and apps DBAs, which is for Oracle's database implementation on virtual machine DB system, et cetera, cloud service, and so on. Okay. Um, next question is from Mahesh. I think I've already covered your question, Mahesh. Uh, further question is from Jenny. I have OCI certifications also. Oracle Autonomous Database from the last one year. Which one will be my? Okay, I think Atul sir just got disconnected. Hello. I mean, sir, uh, you're not audible. I mean, sir, you are not audible. Amit sir, you are not audible at the moment. Okay, guys. In the meantime, uh, till Amit sir resolves his audio issues, and my team uh, will help him in that aspect. Uh, I'll just give you guys a little introduction about Amit sir. Am I audible, well. Shivansh? Yeah, you are audible now. I'll just give a. Uh, okay. I'll give all the people who are here just a brief introduction of you today. Uh, before we move okay. on to the session, uh, guys, uh, Amit sir is a blogger, Microsoft and Oracle certified database expert with a combined experience of 18 plus years in the IT industry and has mentored thousands of students throughout his career. And this is going, uh, I see like a lot of you guys are, have selected the beginner option that we had asked you guys. So this particular series of sessions would be extremely beneficial for you guys. So if you guys have any questions, please do put them down below. And while you're at it, uh, if you're liking the session so far, please do hit the like button on whatever social media platforms you are at at the very moment, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook or 
uh, YouTube. So please do that and please uh, keep and uh, keep going with your questions. Amit sir will be picking them up at uh, you know maybe after a while or at regular intervals as well. Over to you, sir. Okay. I hope I am audible to everyone. Uh, right, Shivansh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Sir. Okay, okay. So thanks for the introduction, Shivansh, and uh, yeah. So uh, myself, Amit, and uh, today we are going to talk about the cloud foundation. Uh, like you know, what is the basic foundation of Oracle Cloud or any cloud? So our module one basically deals with all the cloud concepts. So this course is basically uh, for someone who want to start their cloud journey or maybe they want to uh, you know renew their certification of 1085 because oracle 1085 has uh, you know has got the renewal policy as well and that is you know the 2021 version is uh, already out and we have updated our entire foundation so there are many new things which oracle has introduced many new services are there so we are going to cover that uh, in this um, uh, course so this is like distributed in four days and this is our first day where we are going to talk about the concepts and if time permits we are also going to talk about the cloud uh, uh, the oracle cloud uh, fundamental blocks uh, how it is designed which is basically very useful if you are say designing your architecture on cloud and uh, you, you should know about the internals uh, of oracle basic foundation so with that let's start it and uh, in case if any anything is there or any queries or anything is there i'm going to take it uh, from the various places okay in case don't worry in case if your query is not answered or so we are going to uh, compile it and share it with uh, everyone so that you know it, it will get benefited for each and everyone right so with that let's start with our uh, cloud journey and first i'm going to talk about uh, OK, so already the introduction is there. I'm going to talk about the agenda of module one where we are going to talk about uh, a few concepts on the cloud computing. The most basic one we are going to uh, you know, cover it. We are going to talk about the concept like what high availability means, uh, what is basically the disaster recovery in terms of Oracle cloud or in terms of any cloud you are working with. We are going to talk about the elasticity, scalability, about like why you want to, uh, you know, jump into cloud right now or why organizations are moving to cloud. That is what uh, uh, the, the important thing. And we need to uh, basically work in that direction where we can get, you know, learn with the technology and apart from that can build our career too. So that is what all the cloud basic concepts we are going to cover. and. We are also going to talk about the service model uh, in cloud, which is infrastructure, platform, and software as a service. How it is different from each other and how it is different from the traditional one till what we are using it uh, till now. And apart from that, we are also going to talk about the deployment model of uh, cloud, which is like the public, private, and the hybrid model. Okay, <clears throat> so that is all about the agenda. And this is, I think we have already covered it, but just let me, uh, you know, give you a brief about it. So right now, if you see the foundation one, which we are covering right now, which is, you know, you're seeing it at the bottom. This is what we are going to cover in four days. And once you are done with it, this is going to be the starting point of your cloud. Any any stream you want to go with, either to the operations, either to the developer, or uh, you want to move it to the solution architect side. So that is the first. Uh, basic thing which you should know about it and after that uh, the uh, on the cloud side we have got a complete roadmap first started with an architect okay where it was going to you are going to take deep dive on all the services of oracle cloud and then to know it more better uh, there is a professional certification as well which is purely uh, based on your experience like how you are dealing with the situation how you are going to design it so it is going to cover all those things so that is what the certification roadmap for uh, uh, oracle cloud journey right so from the exam point of view we we can see that the exam basically is distributed into uh, five subheadings 
and the first one is the concept where we which we are going to cover it in this module and then the second module talks about the fundamental block then the core services like what all services are there and what it's all the service portfolio of oracle cloud and on the security side uh, as that is one of the main concern of any organization when moving to cloud. So what services security site services are there? So Oracle has expanded all its service and the security portfolio a lot along with that various monitoring services various uh, compliance services are there where you can see uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, services are available. So that is what uh, we are going to uh, cover in our uh, sessions. Right, so I, as far as I see right now, cloud has make its footprint and many vendors are there in the cloud. And if you see, if you are starting your career now as a fresher or you are say college pass out, then cloud is what the first step you are going to uh, learn. Okay, so I think most of you are all aware of uh, cloud, what cloud is and if you see earlier we used to um, have something either we started at home even like if you talk about the, our uh, k21 as well we were having we buy one server and we kept it in our home and put it on the net and took one public ip and then we were we used to give hands on to the students on that server so that is where we have started and then we have got our office as well, the K21 office, which is there in uh, in uh, uh, Jaipur, in India, in UK, US, everywhere. So that, that is where our office is, which, which, where we have a small data center and we have hosted our on-premise server. And then now what we are doing is we are uh, giving the hands-on, uh, like how you can migrate it to the cloud, to Oracle Cloud or to the AWS or Azure, wherever it is, whatever you know uh, course it is. So where we are giving the, uh, the feel of like how you are going to migrate it to the cloud. So that is what, you know, from the traditional infrastructure or say the data center, we have moved it to the uh, cloud data center. Okay, now what, what is this cloud data center and all? We are going to take a closer look in a few minutes. Right, so problem with your previous uh, traditional uh, architecture or I will say the infrastructure or say the data center was we, we used to pay a lot of rent because uh, the space and all those things, uh, you know, uh, we, we were not owning it. We were paying heavy rents for years together. Uh, on everything on the uh, you know infrastructure or the place and then uh, we used to implement the power supply cooling uh, a lot of maintenance is required in that we were adding in case if you want to scale it up okay it will it is always a big thing because we were not uh, able to get what our required uh, you know infrastructure the sizing and all and we need to either go with the lesser one or maybe go to with a you know heavy lifting and getting the bigger server okay which doesn't fit our requirement or that might not be our requirement so th these are like few of the challenges which were there in the traditional infrastructure and apart from that the provisioning like in case if you want to provision anything for your new project or something it will take at least two to three months to starting from you know putting the request provisioning it getting the budget approved then you, it, it will be uh, procured uh, will be shipped to your data center then a lot of activities needs to be done on that so all these things uh, were there uh, in earlier uh, you know time or traditional way and even like if you see now few of your uh, projects which are still on premise you are facing such kind of uh, uh, you know issues and provisioning so a lot of lead time is required to do all the preparation okay and scalability elasticity uh, all those things are not uh, not, not uh, you know easily available on the traditional infrastructure so to come up with all this problem the concept of cloud computing was introduced um, and that is uh, where you are going to rent your resources uh, everything your storage uh, cpus and everything you are going to uh, rent it out okay or maybe uh, the concept of uh, you know the data center or accessing it remotely and then you know uh, increasing it whatever is required pay as you go uh, means whatever you are using it so it is similar to your taking a decision of either to rent a house or to buy a house which will be more 
uh, you know, easy. So that, that is where, uh, you know, a slight change is there um, in the cloud computing, because in case if you want to implement a big, big, uh, you know, uh, project which requires a lot of uh, performance and a lot of heavy infrastructure, getting it at the beginning will might be a challenge because due to budget issue or, you know, might take long time. And that is where the cloud computing is uh, uh, going to help you to provision the infrastructure quickly, get it available, whatever is required, which fits your requirement, you can get it, all the customized thing available, even starting from one CPU. And yes, right now Oracle also gives you uh, like, you know, even 0.1 CPU, 0.2 CPU, that also is available. So based on that, you, you get your all the infrastructure, the storage and the networking. So these are like, I will say, uh, you know, the pillars of cloud computing, uh, which is going to fulfill your requirement for any project you need infrastructure. And that is how the cloud is going to help you with that. So some of the important characteristics of the uh, cloud I, I can point out is in case if whatever is your requirement, uh, like you can just go to the portal, whatever is needed, just add it and do the testing or you know even it is all the self-service thing there is less dependencies on the it team you can do everything from the console add the storage create the compute instance provision the database whatever is required and can start working on that it has got the uh, you know access from anywhere like from your mobile app from your pda devices from anywhere in the world you just need to have a console access the login credentials uh, whatever type of login you want to set it up and you are done you, you can log in create infrastructure so all those is possible um, uh, from the cloud apart from that uh, it also has a resource pooling which basically you can provision the resource and can share it between uh, you know various uh, infrastructure resources so you don't have to have a dedicated resource available like in case if my requirement is uh, you know i can my, my one compute instance is capable of uh, is underutilized and i can deploy multiple applications can add uh, you know various resources to that and can deploy my applications and use it so it is going to save my cost save my resources everything and it is also readily available elasticity um, so in case say uh, you know the diwali time is there my my website where my business runs is having lot of users which are added now for that users i want to you know when the users are high automatically the resource should get add on okay the number of cpus or the storage or the uh, you know so so that it can accommodate that load and that, that is where the elasticity comes into picture cloud is basically uh, has got uh, you know famous because of this elasticity and the scalability are pretty easy there you can scale up your resource it can elasticity is again when the load is down it will again come back to the normal uh, no, normal uh, uh, infrastructure or the normal position from where, where, which is like you know uh, going to save my cost a lot so and apart from that it has got the measured service like whatever you are using it on the cloud or if say you are have a plan of using it for say down the line five years or ten years then again you can have uh, you know multiple options to save your cost so it has got pay as you go model it has got uh, the credit model like your uh, postpaid mobile phone so those ways are there uh, in which you can basically implement all the services can access the entire portfolio of the cloud and can uh, implement it so less dependencies on the it team and uh, you can design it in a better way so these are like few of the characteristics which makes uh, cloud uh, very prominent in the market and that is where the lot of companies are moving now right so coming to the uh, cloud uh, as i have discussed uh, a lot on that so why you are going to move it to the cloud the first is like it is highly scalable okay you don't have to worry about the scalability on the cloud and uh, the flexibility at the same time uh, the cloud has got a lot of flexibility it, it you you can increase or decrease the resources on the cloud 
your infrastructure costs cost get reduced a uh, security which was one of the biggest concern uh, while moving it to the cloud but now if you see any cloud provider you pick it up the security is basically one of the best on the cloud even like on our traditional data centers we, we even don't have those kind of securities in most of the cases uh, your disaster recovery like in case if there are natural calamities any hurricane or tsunami or anything is there you need to plan a site which is away from that country where your data will get synced up and in case if such kind of uh, event happen uh, your data will be completely saved so dr is basically one of the i will say the costly affair and because of that because of the less visibility most of the companies are not having the dr solution but cloud has make it possible and that is where uh, you you are moving to cloud and apart from that yes there is no location constraint there on the cloud so these are like few of the pointers which uh, you know i feel that uh, will be enough to convince any anybody to move it to the cloud right so again uh, these are like the properties of the cloud uh, uh, where we have the on demand resourcing uh, the scalability the elasticity the shared and the dedicated infrastructure depending upon your requirement uh, it is a multi tenant so like you can have uh, running your application still on the shared infrastructure which is say uh, you know the multi tenant infrastructure or in case if you have a requirement uh, or you want to get it compliant with your various other aspects then you can even go to the dedicated infrastructure as well which is like a private infrastructure or say the private cloud options we are going to uh, check it out more on that uh, the high availability so you can design your infrastructure any application you are deploying it on the cloud is uh, you you can make it highly available okay and even from the cloud side cloud vendor side also few things are provided on the high availability but apart from that you have got various options on the cloud which makes it uh, you, you which gives you to make your application highly available and the disaster recovery too okay right so these are some of the uh, you know uh, hand the cloud vendors which are say i will say the uh, mega scale vendor oracle google cloud amazon alibaba uh, microsoft azure ibm so all these are like the uh, uh, cloud vendors and apart from that there are uh, other cloud vendors as well which are available um, which basically gives you a similar kind of services uh, which you can uh, avail of all right so let's understand uh, the concept various concept of cloud uh, which we have seen it and the first one here we are going to cover it about the high availability so high availability from my point of view is in case if you have uh, you know uh, the the application you are running it uh, and in case if there is some glitch occurs on the hardware side or on the configuration side your business continuity should remain okay at least it should not be there uh, that uh, your uh, application is down and because of that the complete business is not working or affected so high availability basically you know is giving you an option to give you a continuous business running on the um, uh, on those uh, you know with the required services so that basically is what the high availability is and it can be in terms of the services it can be in terms of the hardware it can be in terms of the data center now you need to basically add redundancies to your designing so that in case if one component is not working a similar component is available to cover it up and that that is where oracle or any cloud vendor you can think of they have got multiple data centers which are available uh, which basically serves those purpose so in case if the complete data center is down which is a rare phenomenon but oracle gives you that it will be having uh, you know multiple data centers and your application is getting copied your data is be copied to the multiple data centers so it requires uh, you know on the power cooling networking your services it, it should be redundant 
So you need to add redundancies to your application design to make it highly available. Now, if we talk about the disaster recovery, disaster recovery basically covers two points. One is how much data loss you can bear it and for how much time your application down is possible for the business. So that acceptable range or that um, negotiation with your customers, you need to do it and you need to decide it that, okay, what will be your recovery point objective and what will be your recovery time objective. So till what time you, you know, you can recover your application if it is not available in case of disaster and then how much time it is going to make your application again available in case of disaster. These are the two aspects which you need to uh, figure it out and need to come to a common agreement with your customers and then you can implement it. So that is what on the on the cloud side, I will say this is going to be pretty easy because Oracle cloud or any cloud data centers are globally available. OK, so in case suppose you are working in London, you have your data center there. You can plan for your disaster recovery solution on the cloud and that that is where it gives you the flexibility of making your business continue business, uh, you know, uh, directly available and make it a uh, more uh, more stringent uh, in terms in, in, when in case of disaster recovery. So your you should be able to recover your application or any business data in case of those uh, recoveries, natural calamities or any, you know, say the power failure or anything happens. <clears throat> so it basically covers about time it takes to recover the data and how amount of data which you can afford to lose. So these are the two aspects you, you can think about it. The next concept which I would like to talk about is the fault tolerance. Okay, like how your system is designed in case of any fault, it happens because it is all the hardware. Okay, and we, we should accept that that fault can happen. Hardware can fail. So how your application is designed to accept that fault. Okay, in case you, you have got uh, say multiple um, multiple applications, uh, you know, uh, server which are running in case one server is down your business continuity should be there via another route. And that is where your application design comes on the, uh, you know, it should be in the acceptable range and should be, uh, you know, have a proper fault tolerance design. So when any component fails, it should be always, uh, you know, uh, there, the alternate component is there to serve your request, to serve your application, to serve your business. Right, so uh, another aspect which is like I will say the most important one is elasticity and scalability. Okay, so scalability I will say that is going to be the strategic operation where you are going to add, you add more resources to make your application or make your design more scalable. Okay, like say today, my four CPUs are there, which is going to serve the load. Now tomorrow the load get increased. I want to increase the CPU on my server. I, I can add more CPUs and make it eight CPUs. Or I can make it 10 or 12 or 13, 14, whatever number of CPUs I want to add it. I can I can go ahead and add it. So that is known as the scalability. OK, now. What is elasticity? So elasticity is basically more or less is, um, you know, the tactical approach, which is like uh, more at the runtime. In case my application at the runtime is getting, you know, need more resources, it should automatically should be added to that. And apart from that, once my application, uh, say my, my acceptance level or say my request level are down again, my, my hardware should again come back to the normal position like a rubber band when you stretch it it can get stretched but when you leave it it will again come back to the normal shape and that is where the elasticity also comes into picture 
so elasticity is uh, like more like an automated operation okay which is like required to match the workload at the runtime and it should uh, you know uh, get again come back to the normal position when the load is not that high so that is what the elasticity is now com coming to the elasticity only so it is the ability of uh amit sir uh, there's a yes. question that we got uh, on our youtube channel from randeep kumar what features make oci cloud a better choice than other cloud vendors right so just give me give me 2 minutes i'm going to you know break it for the questions and we'll take this just give give uh, you know few minutes shivansh okay right okay okay so elasticity is basically uh, you know the ability to increase and decrease the count size okay so make sure the elasticity is increase and decrease both and in this case you can have uh, you know based on that you can have a vertical and the horizontal scalability it can be manual or it can be automatic and it depends upon like what kind of workload you have or how much you know how you have defined it or designed it okay and like pay whatever you are using it that is what it will be okay now the scalability is mostly deals with the increase of the resources and you are you can have a scale uh, the scalability either the horizontal scalability which basically <clears throat> if you see you can have a scale up or you can have a scale out so you can have an horizontal scalability or you can have a vertical scalability okay so this basically deals with the vertical scalability like i am just adding the resources to the same machine and make it increase okay so that is a scale up and in case what i am doing is here suppose it is a two cpu machine i need to add more i am just adding the similar machine to make it uh, you know scalable so, and this is known as a scale out okay so this is you can see this is going to be a vertically increasing like next so this is known as a vertical scaling and this is known as an horizontal scaling because you are just adding more resources and scaling it horizontally so that that is what uh, the scalability is which is basically dealing with the increase of the uh, resources right so i think um, let let's um, yeah so the question which uh, shivans shivans has uh, put is like what are the features on the oci which makes it uh, uh, different from other cloud vendors okay so primarily what i will say is on the first and foremost on the database side okay oracle cloud has got the world uh, you know renowned databases the rdbms which is like very popular and that oracle database has got few more features um, like you know the real application cluster which is uh, say the scalability and all in case if you are talking about so that is available on only on oracle cloud on the other cloud vendor also you can you know achieve that but that is not certified yet by oracle apart from that the exadata machine which is basically for oracle purpose built machine for the oracle database which gives you the 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 world's uh, best performance for the databases which is only available at oracle cloud not at any other uh, cloud vendor and one is your um, because oracle got a chance to build its data center from the scratch and oracle has done done lot of research from for other cloud vendors as well like uh, azure and uh, oric uh, azure and aws so these data centers were like you know built in from 2006 onwards now in case any new thing is there and you need to uh, you know uh, make it correct uh, it is not possible for aws to uh, to 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 rectify that oracle has rectified it has got an off box uh, network uh, virtualization layer which basically gives you the best performance and apart from that uh, oracle uh, compute instances or any other resources if you see compared to aws they they are uh, very cheap 
uh, uh, with other cloud vendors so these are like few of the um, i will say the highlight highlighted points which make it uh, better than other uh, cloud uh, vendors and also oracle application which is uh, well uh, has um, the erp applications which is certified and has got many options there to run it on the oracle cloud has got an automated tool called ebs cloud manager in our ebs to ebs on oci we cover that so that basically gives you an upper hand and um, upper hand like with the cloud vendor so that is where oracle has gotten uh, better performance of all these things on the cloud all right shivansh Okay, uh, sir, we have got one more question from Rajeshri. Right. Uh, could you please briefly ex explain what is scale up? Okay, so scale up is basically, uh, I will say that the same uh, machine, in case if you need more resources on that machine, you are adding more resources to that machine. Okay, so you are going to add the resources to the same machine and make it more stronger. Okay, but scale out deals with adding the similar machine of the same type and uh, to, to the uh, to to your uh, architecture design. So that that is what the difference is. So scale up is like you know my system. I am having say four GB uh, RAM right now and uh, two CPUs. I can add two more CPUs to the same machine and four more GB and I can make it four CPU and eight GB RAM machine my same laptop or save the same resources the compute instances so that is what the scale up means so you are adding the resources to the same server on which you have deployed your application um we've got a few questions and uh, do you want to take them now or do you want to take them uh in, throughout the session uh, we, we can so let, let's take it after five minutes Okay, okay sure. and we will be at the logical point where we can take the uh, you know questions. Okay, so another cloud concepts which we concept which I would like to cover here is which is the most important and the decision uh, taking factor from the management side is the capex and the opex. So capex is basically deals with the, the capital investment or expenses of on these uh, cloud resources okay so capital investment or capital expenses which you are going to do is they are the upfront investment like if say you are planning to buy a server a complete your requirement is say uh, you know only the 16 cores you need it and uh, you need only 256 gb ram but if you see in the market and the servers which are available is 512 so there you need to do an upfront investment of getting those servers and uh, uh, and work on that and apart from that, you also need to have an operational expenses to run those servers. Now, in case of cloud, what happens is you don't have to do an upfront investment. OK, today I need databases. I'm going to take the databases directly. I don't have to worry about the infrastructure. I don't have to worry about anything. I, I can just go ahead, start using it, pay for like whatever my requirement is and maybe down the line say six months or one year or two years in case if my work is done i'm going to uh, you know leave that thing so whatever i am going to use it i'm going to pay for it so my capital in expenses gets reduced a lot in case of cloud and at the same time the operational expenses is you anyways you are going to have those operational expenses in both the cases in cloud mostly you are going to deal with an operational expenses of whatever you are going to use it you are going to only pay for it okay and this is going to be a time saving thing it will be readily available and there will be uh, recurring cost is going to be uh, there in case if you are adding more resources or so so that is what it is going to be so per second billing per month billing per hour billing so that is what the billing cycles are for various resources so that is where so operational expenses is very easily uh, you know get approved from the management and that is where it is going to reduce the lead time for uh, you know adopting any new technology okay so let's have a quiz here 
uh, let's see uh, you know you can put your answers in the chat box whichever is available to you so here uh, let's see about this what does the compute instance vertical scaling means so enabling the disaster recovery uh, providing the fault tolerance adding the additional compute instances or changing to a larger or a smaller ship what basically the vertical scalability means so you can put your uh, uh, answers in the chat right so let, let me take this so here we have just seen about the vertical scalability and if you see uh, it is basically going to be uh, the the one where we are going to add the resources to the same compute uh, machine okay we can change the shape we can reduce it or we can increase it okay but it will be on the same machine we are not going to add an additional machines and so in my case uh, here I, I will select answer D which is like changing to a larger or a smaller shape is what your vertical scalability means so this is like the pattern or say the type of questions which you can get it in the exam so just to have a feel uh, you know just added uh, uh, you know these type of questions okay so now this is I think we before proceeding further we can have the questions so she wants uh, yes, you can put the questions here now or tell me She wants you there Yes, sir. am I audible now? Yeah, now you are yeah, just give me one second. Okay, so we've got a question from Ajay loves to on YouTube has there mm -hmm. been a comparison done for a company who went to cloud with X number of users and after five to 10 years have exponentially increased and has more applications being used or was it less expensive than going on premise? Right, so that's a, that's a very uh, good question I will say. So in case, uh, you know, you have a requirement of say, um, uh, you know, today you have a requirement of say 100 users right now and based on that you have deployed your application say on the cloud okay and you have basically added some buffer in case uh, you know say your 100 to uh, it becomes to 150 so that you have designed your application for 150 users now in case if you if it is exponentially increased the first incidence only you will see that okay or you have an insight that your users you maybe you have acquired a company or some merge has been done merger has been done so in that that case your user basis or your uh, you know exponentially your users will get increased now if it is like on-premise then I will say that it is going to take a lot of efforts and a lot of uh, expenses there to make it make it uh, you know uh, um, make it sustainable uh, for that many users but on the cloud what you can do is there is a concept of auto scalability as well so as soon as the users get increased okay like the best example is during the Thanksgiving day you might have seen that a lot of uh, sales are going on in that in that time and your your number of users who are hitting the website get increased and that is that that is how the auto scalability is there okay it is configured and when the number of users are increased it is going to add more servers to your resources and that is how it is going to bear the load so that is the exponential rise of your application of your users and that is how you, you can have a sustainable infrastructure for accommodating those many users. Um, Amit, so that, that's all the questions that we have at the very moment. Guys, okay. for all the people who are watching on different platforms, if you guys have any questions, please do put them in the comment section. Either the somebody from the K21 Academy team will get your question answered or we can get Amit sir as well to answer your question over to you sir thank you right okay so we have seen various aspects of cloud right now okay uh, the first one if you see the characteristics of the cloud we have covered it up and we have talked about uh, the on-demand services and everything now let's have a look uh, you know at the 
the, the middle one, the service model and the deployment model. Okay. So let's first see about the uh, cloud service model, which basically deals with the uh, software as a service, platform as a service and the infrastructure as a service. Okay, in simple terms, if I want to say what it means is in one word, in case of infrastructure as a service, what you do is you build your application or you, you built your application. Now, in case of, uh, you know, let's go to extreme right and see when you come to the platform as a service, it is basically you are going to deploy your application on the cloud. OK, that means some platform is there which you are going to use it and then you are going to just deploy your application over there. And if we say talk about the software as a service, it means that you are going to buy your application. OK, the standard functionality is available and you are just going to buy it. The best example of software as a service is your Gmail accounts. All the standard features are available in that. You just go ahead, create your login and start using it. So that means you are going to buy your application over there. OK, or the features, whatever is available and you are going to use it. OK, so let's have a more closer look on, uh, you know, on this uh, uh, service model. So for right now, I will just open it, uh, you know, the traditional uh, data centers and you know how it works. So if you say your traditional data centers or say your on-premise data centers, which you have it everything like starting from the network base networks, the storage servers uh, and various compute instances, you are going to deploy the big servers and then over that you are going to create the virtualization layer. Above that you have an operating system, middle tier, middleware, uh, various runtimes are there and your application and the data all these are all managed by the client itself okay now based on this stack if we just say the last four thing if we outsource it or say any cloud vendor is there who is maintaining that and above that you are going to create your operating system of your choice deploy your applications and put your applications and data over there, then this is known as an infrastructure as a service. That means you are just going to maintain the operating system and deploy the applications of your choice. But the bottom one is completely owned by the cloud vendor. The base base infrastructure or base, base hardware we need it. That is all owned by some another vendor and over that you are just installing your the operating system of your choice and deploying your applications over it. So this is known as an infrastructure as a service where the infrastructure basic infrastructure is given to the cloud vendor, but you are also having the control right from the operating system level to the deployment option de deployment level. Now in case if I just say uh, you know outsource more things to the cloud vendor and I just take care of my application and data then that is what I will say the platform as a service now platform as a service is you will be given the platform for deploying your application the best example if you want to see is Oracle databases on the cloud okay that is where you are going to just go ahead and create your database and that's it everything is maintained by Oracle and everything is maintained by the cloud vendor here. You just have to uh, load your data and uh, manage the application, integrate it with an application. That's it. So that platform is the one, the base platforms over which you are going to have the data and the application. The third one, if you see, is I am outsourcing everything to the cloud. And what I'm going to do is I'm just creating my login and start using it like your Gmail or um, any any service you can think about it. OK, y your uh, uh, say Microsoft uh, Outlook and all those things. So that is where the standard functionalities are available and you are going to use those standard functionality by creating the login or getting those services buying those services. 
So this is basically the cloud service model, which is like available for all the cloud vendors. And you can see various applications or we, you know, these are like all the portfolios which are there available for the for the cloud vendors. Now there are cloud vendors who are say, uh, you know, um, good in uh, infrastructure as a service or they have got the services which are applicable for you know available for as a platform as a service or they they are purely on the software as a service okay if we talk about say oracle oracle provides all these three services and uh, you know in the cloud uh, portfolio and rich cloud services are available like oracle has got the software as a saas as a service platform as a service and infrastructure as a service all three so if we see an example from the oracle side you can see the compute object storage a uh, networking load balancing everything these are the services which are available as an infrastructure as a service now if we see talk about the platform as a service oracle has got the database cloud the java cloud service jcs all these are the platform as a service and if we say talk about the saas model oracle has got erp cloud fusion cloud um, human resources cloud sales cloud so all these are there which are available at oracle as a software as a service so all the standard functionalities are implemented in that you just have to put your data there load your data and start using it so these are like the examples of infrastructure pass and the saas as a uh, service okay now as i was uh, you know talking about the oracle applications okay don't worry about it if you are not aware of it so oracle application is basically an erp based application enterprise resource planning which is uh, uh, quite uh, globally accepted by multiple customers and they are running their entire business on oracle e business suite so this e business suite is also available on the cloud and it has got uh, you know so this is going to give you a bit insight about um, like how you can use multiple services and can design your application deployment okay like you can use then infrastructure as a service or you can use the combination of both infrastructure and the platform as a service which is available so here i am not going to you know talk uh, too com in a too complicated way here okay but those who are aware of ebs application then they will uh, be knowing it it is a three tier application has got an application tier the database tier and the client tier and these two tiers are basically you can deploy it on the infrastructure and the platform as a service as a combination okay now just to uh, let you know that we have got a, a, a separate course where we are covering the ebs uh, you know on cloud and various options and various uh, you know the scenarios which it covers and it's a complete hands-on course we cover various automated tools which are available for oracle applications so that this is where you can uh, go ahead and uh, you know um, check it out uh, what all we cover there right and we also have a free class where you can register it you register yourself and take uh, take a look uh, that what we have covered why why oracle application needs to be moved to cloud so this is an eight weeks program and we have got around 20 plus hands on lab along with the ebs migration to the cloud so where you you will get a feel of it like how it usually works right so let's take another quiz here uh, which resource do you manage in an infrastructure as a service offering so put your qu questions, put your answers in the chat or what you think about it. So which resources you manage in an infrastructure as a service offering. So options are a networking, B servers, C storage and D operating system. Okay, so you need to write what you are going to manage it in an infrastructure as a service. Okay, this is going to be a tricky one. So just 
um, yeah so I, I think yeah uh, I hope you all have uh, put your queries so yes you can see it now the networking servers and the storage is all managed by the cloud vendor okay and what you are going to manage is an operating system okay so in case if it is uh, there I would like to again you know just move to this one and here you can see networking storage servers these are all managed by cloud vendors operating system is what the client manages so operating system is basically the answer okay so now as we have seen about uh, the cloud deployment model let's have a, uh, we have seen the cloud service model now let's have a look on the cloud deployment model what cloud deployment model is so it basically deals with the public private and the hybrid infrastructure uh, hybrid models yeah uh, shivansh uh, do we have any questions here yes amit sir uh, we've got a few questions let's take them up before we move ahead uh, so we've got a question uh, from just give me one second. So we've got a question from Chandra Chandrakant More on LinkedIn. Uh, if mm -hmm. we have application and database on different AD, may we observe network latency? Uh, no, uh, it will be um, in microseconds. A 0 0.006 microsecond latency is uh, what Oracle says, which is like very difficult to observe it. So within the different availability data availability. Uh, domains or say the data centers, but within the same region, uh, the latency will not be there because they are all all the data centers within the region are connected with a high speed network with a low latency um, and the low latency network. So no latency will be observed in the in the same region, but in the different data centers. Yes. Okay. Uh, moving to the next question, we've got a question from Srinivasan on uh, YouTube, uh, shouldn't middleware be part of uh, PASS as middleware is organization specific? Middleware uh, in the sense the component middleware, yes. It, it is basically as a platform as a service. Okay, in organizations like if you say the middleware is my web logic. So web logic is available as a platform as a service or say um, any, uh, you know, um, uh, any application server or so whichever is there it is it comes in the platform as a service portfolio okay uh, the next question is from uh, prabir mohapatra on youtube is it possible to have only saas and infra and platform still be owned by client a uh, saas and infra uh, infrastructure as a service and uh, uh, so uh, even like various cloud vendors, they gives you that option of, uh, you know, putting the cloud infrastructure in the customer data center also. So that that is, you know, where they provide various uh, uh, applications, the SaaS application as well in the customer data center. So that is known as a in Oracle. If you say it is known as a cloud at customer. So that is available in the data center. So where the infrastructure is owned by the cloud vendor only, but yes, they are going to give you the SaaS services within the uh, data center. Okay, uh, the last question is uh, from Chandrakant More on LinkedIn for Oracle DB, which are all operating systems I can use in OCI or it's only Oracle Linux. So Oracle gives you an option of, uh, uh, you know, Windows operating system and Linux and various other flavors of, uh, uh, you know, Linux, the CentOS, the Oracle Enterprise Linux, uh, the SUSE Linux. And apart from that, uh, it gives you uh, the Oracle Solaris as well uh, uh, and Windows operating system. So these are like all the flavors of uh, um, uh, Linux and the uh, Unix, I will say is available so and apart from that the windows operating system is also available uh, we've got one more question uh, from ahmed ali on youtube is there tools for scalability manual or it's auto managed 
so it depends upon like uh, oracle has got an uh, scale auto scalability option as well where you need to con keep it configured and it will automatically get scaled up apart from that uh, the dynamic scaling is available for various resources and along with that um, you know various services too which is available so most of the things are uh, automated okay uh, but in case if it is not there you need to do a slight configuration to make it automated so that is all available yes uh, that's all so thank you okay okay so yeah good good uh, questions and keep uh, uh, you know pouring your doubts and questions uh, you know so that uh, it will become more interactive <clears throat> okay so let's proceed with the cloud deployment models so when you are say talking about the cloud deployment model you can have an option of uh, running your application or service or your application deploy your application either on the public cloud or the private cloud or the hybrid cloud okay so now if i say uh, you know on the public cloud which is like available for everyone and it is mostly going to be uh, the available on the internet you can just log in from the console and after logging to the console you can deploy your applications there okay so that is known as the public cloud which is like going to be a shared resources as well like one big hardware is going to be there if suppose you and me both have created the account in the same region or so then it is quite possible that your virtual machine instance and my virtual machine instance will be running uh, on the same hardware okay so where the hardware is shared and is used uh, then you have a private cloud now private cloud is something which is going to be you know the name itself suggests the private it should it cannot be public it should be only accessible uh, via you and by nobody else and it uh, more focus is on the security and the compliance okay so if i say the security side the security side is uh, uh, basically your your data should not be on the public cloud okay or say the shared hardware or it should not go outside the country because of the governance policy or it should not be moving uh, you know uh, say out of your data center so in that case you need to have a private uh, you know control on that and uh, we, we have the services available from uh, oracle as well where you can you know have the private cloud running in your data center get compliance with all the things also apart from that even uh, you know when you are logging to the console you have an option that you can get the data your resources which is like the dedicated resources to your instances so all those things comes under the private cloud uh, offering and apart from that there is a combination like today i am running on my um, you know on premise cloud but i want to move only some portion to the cloud not all say my database is only i want to move it application is still i am using it on my on premise so that is known as an hybrid uh, combination and apart from that you can also have an hybrid combination of running it on the public and the private like i can run my databases on the private and application on the public cloud so that that is another combination where you have a you you can have a shared security uh, model or responsibility each will be like say owned by the cloud vendor and between you so these are like the three deployment model which are available uh, to the cloud okay so let's talk about the uh, public cloud hey, uh, shivansh just give me a minute please
Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. Actually, I got uh, you know some urgent uh, calls, so I was just there. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's talk about the public cloud. Uh, the the public cloud is basically the one which is going to be available, uh, say, accessible over the internet. So just give me, uh, you know, uh, a minute where I can, you know, show you uh, the public cloud, uh, some options which are available, just to give you a feel about it. Right, so here what you are seeing right now, this is going to be uh, the public cloud offering and this is how your cloud, uh, you know, the public cloud looks like. Okay, so here you can see, you know, I can go ahead and create, uh, you know, some compute instance, the virtual machines, uh, which, which is going to be uh, running. So you can see here's few of the, uh, you know, machines are running here and these are like IP address and I can connect it apart from that you can also see some storage options are here the networking so this is like I I can you know access it over the internet and I can you know run various resources we and do the combinations add the storage to my instances design the networking control the access everything so this is going to be say on the public cloud but if you see here Okay, and there is an option of dedicated virtual machine host. Okay, now this is something you can say that this is I am say uh, you know uh, taking the hardware from Oracle, and I want only my instance should be running on that. Nobody else can run their instance on it. This is completely dedicated to me. Like if suppose I want to move my complete uh, you know data center. And this is going to give me say 50 or 40 CPU machine, which I can you know use it for my purpose. I can configure it. I can uh, use it for say creating multiple virtual machines. But this is a big hardware which I am going to get it from Oracle. But this is dedicated to me only. I cannot. Uh, it doesn't allow any other um, a customer or uh, to run its instance on this. So this is a dedicated hardware. Okay, so this is say one of the uh, you know private uh, uh, hardware which I am getting it from the cloud. Okay, so these are like few of the options which are available. So public cloud is something which is like quite easily available when you are say registering for Oracle Cloud account. Also, you can get those things uh, uh, you know on the public cloud only, and you can deploy your applications. Now on the private cloud, you have an offering where what Oracle does is one is what we have seen it, the hardware which we can get it directly, you know, for us from at the public cloud. That is one of the, uh, you know, a privacy option. And apart from that, Oracle gives all these cloud service to your data center on premise data center as well. And that is what is known as the cloud at customer where you are going to take care of the security like you have got the sensitive data. Uh, there or uh, you know way which you cannot move it out your financial data and everything from the from your data center like the banking environment okay or telecom environment so these are like uh, the business areas which has got more sensitive information available in the data and that is where the private cloud comes into picture now private cloud is what I have mentioned uh, you as the cloud at customer as well. Okay, and this is where you can see uh, I will have the uh, you know the complete uh, you know big servers and everything the cloud servers will be available in my data center only which Oracle is going to push it or keep it in my data center. But at the same time Oracle will also have the access to manage these servers and maintain these servers. But at the same time, this is in my premises and I'm going to access it. So this is this gives me like my data is not moving out of my premises. All the sensitive data will be within my premises. It is not on the shared infrastructure. It is on the private infrastructure and security and compliance is what is the priority here. So this is definitely the on the cost wise. This is going to be a bit 
uh, on the higher side but yes it depends upon like what your priority is and when it comes to the hybrid cloud so hybrid cloud uh, can be like you know the public and the private cloud combination or it can be on premise and the cloud combination so th that that way uh, you know on the security side uh, uh, what responsibility the cloud vendor is going to have what responsibility the customer is going to have so those kind of uh, you know the responsibility agreement happens and this is where the hybrid cloud deployment occurs so you have that option as well like i am not very much confident on the cloud right now i will try to move a small portion of application to clouds and on prod instances and see that okay how it works and how i'm going to manage it once i get full confidence on the cloud i'm going to move my uh, you know entire application to the cloud so that is also one of the way to move it in case of say disaster recovery which we were talking earlier uh, where uh, you know you can put your uh, instances the disaster recovery instances on the cloud and still your primary instances are running on your data center so that is also one of the hybrid cloud model right so oracle cloud infrastructure gives you basically the complete deployment choice either you can have a public cloud or you can have the cloud at customer or say the private cloud for the uh, customers who have got the security and the governance as the priority right okay so yeah this is the time where we can you know take few more questions uh Shivansh, if we have anything, can, can you just put me, put it here? Uh, Shivansh, you there? If you are talking, you are on mute. okay 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 so this is the time where we can you know quickly have a, a look uh, about the oci services which are available okay uh, the service portfolio uh, so just have a quick walk through through that so if i say log into the oracle cloud account okay better to show it uh, from here this is going to give you a more uh, you know feel about the cloud so if i say go here you can see here these are like all my infrastructure on the left hand side if you are seeing it this is all my infrastructure as a service okay so you have got compute services storage networking databases now there are two databases services because now oracle has got its own say oracle databases as well and apart from that oracle also gives you the mysql services too and the external database like any database which is available on your on premise you can even manage it from the cloud and then it has got an analytics and the ai services developer services identity and governance services the security options then the monitoring options as well uh, these are like all the new services and this is what we are also going to cover because this is all going to be in the 2021 version of uh, uh, cloud foundation then the the some of the hybrid models hybrid services are there the migration service and it has got like so earlier when oracle has started it has started with oracle classic model and that is where you can see still few services are there on the classic side but yes most of the services oracle has moved it to the gen 2 cloud which you might be hearing a lot uh, you know even from in the oracle documentation or in whatever oracle is promoting so it is all the gen 2 cloud the gen 1 was classic and gen 2 is where you have got the better infrastructure and better services uh, resources available at the low cost so if we say go to the compute services you can see a lot of things and somebody was asking about the automation 
uh, the scalability. So this is where you can see the uh, you know auto scalability options which are available. You can see here auto scaling configuration. <clears throat> So this has got the complete portfolio uh, and apart from that it also has got uh, some of the operating system management services too now if you see the storage the oracle provides you three kinds of storage okay one is the block storage another one is an object storage and the third one is the file storage services so which is like uh, you know when you want to attach it based on your requirement you can attach it to the compute instances on the networking side uh, many components are there. You can see the net subnets routing table security list the firewalls load balancer Now even Oracle gives you the visualization tool as well like whatever you have created it You can see it as a network diagram kind of thing Then the DNS services uh, the connectivity from your on-premise to the cloud data centers You need to have a VPN and all so this is all available uh, uh, under the networking and even you can have bring your own IP address as well like whatever your on-premise IP address is and you want when you are moving it to the cloud if you have got an IP dependency Oracle gives you the that option too. Oracle cloud supports both IPv4 and IPv6 then coming to the database so this is one of the uh, you know important services and one of the pillar services as well and is different from uh, you know the cloud other cloud vendors so other cloud vendors if you see they give you compute um, networking and the storage as the pillar services oracle gives you database as well as a pillar service where you can see the autonomous databases are there um, even autonomous database give comes with uh, the shared infrastructure and the dedicated model both then you have got the bare metal virtual machine exadata database then the golden gate services and then the external databases and this is like the clouded customer the private uh, private cloud the exadata clouded customer so this is where you can um, just leverage your services you can have a no sql databases mysql databases so this way like you can see the complete uh, portfolio and we are going to cover all these things in our coming sessions have a closer look <clears throat> of all these services but before that you are seeing it here everything but in case if you see that you know there are what are the fundamental blocks of oracle cloud which includes your data center regions uh, the fall domains and all so that that is what uh, our second module is uh, you know all about that uh, which we are going to check it out. I think yes, we are almost there on the time But yes, we are going to cover that in our uh, uh, you know uh, next uh, session, but before uh, that I would like to uh, See, you know if we have uh, uh, any questions. So Shivan, uh, you there uh, If you are there then just you can let me know if yeah. any questions are there yeah we have got a few questions sir uh let yes. me just pick them up i had some internet issues this. that's why I oh, no problem. okay uh so we've got a question from raj Shri on linkedin why uh mm -hmm. does it mean private cloud and on-premises are the same uh no i will say that uh, on-premise hardware is where you are not having the scalability and the elasticity option uh if you say the private cloud it is i will say that it is the services which cloud vendors provide you on your on premise okay but the hardware is still owned by oracle itself or the cloud vendor itself so you need to provide the space okay where they can put their hardware and everything they are giving you as the cloud service the pay as you go model but on your premises so it is not exactly like what your on premise hardware you are running it right now no it is not like that it is a different you are getting the cloud service only but on your premises okay uh we've got a few questions not just one from mm -hmm. tony thank you very much for posting all your questions sir um uh, so uh you can have a private cloud in oci uh, bracket in oracle cloud not on prem a private cloud on oci that uh, can you repeat it please so uh, I, I think it's, it's from a slide or something. So can you have a private cloud in OCI in Oracle Cloud, not on-prem? 
yes we, we can have it we we can we can basically uh, if you see uh, you know oracle gives you the services like the dedicated virtual machine now this is something which is running on the public cloud right now but it is the single tenant model now in the cloud you have got the multi tenant and the single tenant model based you know like whether the hardware can be shared by multiple users okay that is what is known as the multi tenant or that uh, you know the hardware can be used by the single user that is known as the single tenant model so oracle cloud provides you something on the you know services on the cloud side but that are you know you can consider those as a private services because you will be the one who are going to have an access to those services only nobody else can access those hardware or run anything on that so that is more like a dedicated machine or say the private uh, virtual machine which is going to be available for the customers okay uh, we've got an, a few other questions from tony as well uh, can oci yes. use dns on prem yes absolutely you can configure your on premise dns as well and you can use it for the for, for uh, uh, you know for resolutions but you need to have a private connectivity between your data center on premise data center and the cloud data centers and then you can use it yes yeah it it gives you that okay uh, and the last question uh, from tony is can oci access adfs on prem yes it, it can it can access the adfs on prem yes okay uh we've got like a lot of questions so i'll just pick them up one yeah. by one uh for that you need uh, to uh, just want to add it add it to the previous one you need to add that as a provider in your oracle uh, cloud infrastructure and then then you can use it yes it provides you that okay yes. uh, we've Next got a question. question from ahmed ali on uh, on our youtube uh what about db version compatibility issues if i am running old version and moving to cloud new version right so oracle gives you uh, the minimum version of the database which supports oracle cloud is 11204 and in case if you have a lower version then you need to upgrade it or you can you know upgrade and migrate both on the uh, you know in the same go but is the minimum version which is supported on the cloud is 11204 and uh, till now it is supporting till 21c cloud versions database version okay uh we've got a question from yamini on youtube can you share an example of hybrid cloud a uh, hybrid cloud is uh, uh, something i will say that you know something running on the on my on premise okay say i have decided to migrate uh, my database to cloud okay so i have moved my database to cloud okay and i am keeping my application um uh, you know still on my on premise data center okay because cloud databases uh, you know need say more uh, um, more resources and say you know want enhanced resources so i have moved that migrated to the cloud but still my application is running on on premise so that is what the combination of hybrid cloud where uh, you know the on premise and the cloud both comes into picture okay uh, the next question we got is from uh, linkedin can private cloud instances be on cloud providers site uh private cloud instances uh, yes so uh, as i mentioned that you know oracle gives you that single tenancy and all those things uh, you know there where you can uh, you know um, put your instances and that will be the single tenant model so that that is not on the customer data center but it is on the cloud data center so yes it can be there okay uh before we move on to the next question guys i would like you guys to read this first session of oci out of 5 on the comment section wherever you guys are watching it we really appreciate it i hope it's a 5 and if it's lesser than that whatever rating that you would like to give us please do mention the rating uh, the reason uh, so that we could improve in our upcoming sessions so uh, while i'm picking up the questions please do rate us out of 5 5 being the highest in the comment section wherever you guys are watching it Okay, uh, so we've got the next question from Anmol. What will be the benefit if we keep our infra at our own BC over keeping on private cloud? Um, 
the infrastructure uh, running it on our own data means it is related to the cloud itself like the cloud infrastructure is that what you mean yeah i i think that's, that's okay right so right so uh, say you know running your say your infrastructure uh, right now running in your data center you you if you want to scale it up you have a limitation if you want to uh, say add more resources you need to get uh, you know a lot of approval and it will be a long process but say running it on the cloud uh, the infrastructure provisioning it to the cloud like here if you see i can just uh, you know go ahead and create one instance um here and i have got all the options uh, you know what, what kind of uh, shape i want to select so i have got all the processors here available i can increase it i can decrease it like here you can see i can go, go up to 64 cpus and i can go up to one terabyte of uh, ram here directly and depending upon my choice i can just go ahead and have whatever i want it and can get, get this provision immediately within few seconds my instance will be up and running but i cannot do the same thing on the uh, you know on premise as well and um, uh, th there is a lot of uh, you know uh, approvals required a lot of budgeting is required and maybe limitations might be there that you cannot go beyond that um, you know uh, be beyond that limit so my hardware limitation and everything will be there but here i can get the flexibility to select what i want it and what, what is required okay uh, moving to the next question we got from utpal kumar on youtube i have uh, a developer developed a web application using mean stack how can we deploy it on uh, oci deploy in to oci the application deployment so bean stack i i believe it is uh, basically the microsoft based application so you have got uh, the microsoft uh, servers as well available here which you can uh, you know uh, provision it like here you can see what all is uh, uh, the operating system available which is so here you can see the windows linux uh, oracle linux autonomous linux centos ubuntu everything is available so you need to basically deploy it on the windows machine and you can create the beanstack and de use uh, deploy your application there on the cloud uh, we've just got a few last questions i'll just pick them up uh, as quickly as possible we've got a question from mukesh kulkarni on youtube what is migration service used for so migration service basically is used for migrating your on premise application to the cloud so oracle gives you various services like migration of uh, databases to cloud and even like if you are running an oracle application then that oracle application oracle gives you the lift and shift services as well uh, via cloud manager to migrate it to the cloud the automated way so that is used for migration moving your workload to the uh, cloud from on premise okay uh the next question is from ajay loves to on youtube isn't uh ias provided by the vendor can we do private ias a private ias yes that that is what i have mentioned it that uh, the dedicated hardware is available which is nothing but the private ias only which is the, which is going to be on the public cloud but will be used by you only so that is you can consider it as a private ias service uh, and we've got another question from Ranjir Kumar on LinkedIn. Does OCI provide RSC features for SaaS model? RSC is, uh, I understand that is a real application cluster. Yes, so whatever, so SaaS model is basically where the Oracle is going to give you the applications. Okay, like uh, the e-business suit application, which Oracle has got a supply chain, HRMS, and all the other applications which are available, which is available in the software as a service. And software as a service is basically where Oracle is managing everything. You only have to, uh, you know, just load your data and start using it. So at the backend hardware, whatever Oracle is using, that, that we don't have any control over it. But say if you want to go with the real application cluster, Oracle has got the platform as a service where you will you can get the uh, the the rack 
real application clusters running or even like on the exadata also oracle gives you up to eight node of racks available okay uh Mr. this is the last question we're picking up again it's from ajay loves to on youtube why do companies usually put their database in cloud even if it's too sensitive isn't it more secure if they keep it on on premise uh then have their app put on a cloud instead um, see, usually, you know, it is correct that, you know, the sensitive uh, uh, data is there in case of that sensitive data. And, you know, you want to get it compliant with, uh, uh, you know, your governance policy and all that way, then it is not advisable to keep your database on the cloud. But for that, Oracle gives you the private cloud at customer. OK, now, in case if you are, say, moving your data to the cloud, OK, although it is a sensitive data, but Oracle gives you a lot of security features uh, for, for the uh, database as well. So you will be having the, the encryption of your database. Your database, which is stored at rest, is always be encrypted with AES-128 algorithm. Or if you want, you can uh, um, make it to AES-256. The higher encryption levels are available. Oracle also gives you an option to uh, you know secure your data using the transparent data encryption so whatever data which is kept on the cloud is always encrypted so a lot of security features are available okay so in case if uh, you know you want to um, you know although your data is there on the public cloud but yes it is very much secure too right yeah, uh, Amitra, that's that's all the questions we get, uh, we have uh, from from K21 Academy. Thank you very much for coming in, and for all the people who have joined in, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you guys uh, in the next session. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I see a lot of ratings. Uh, that is five, and actually uh, no ratings that is lesser than five. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm I'm glad that you guys had enjoyed. And right, so we are go going to uh, going to continue with the uh, module two in the next week, uh, um, you know, on Saturday, uh, same time, uh, India time, eight to ten. And I think if you have re not registered it yet, just go ahead and register it so that you will not miss it. So we are going to cover completely uh, 1085 certification from the 2021 point of view. So this is a good platform for renewing your certification as well as a good platform to you know start your cloud journey as well and thanks everyone who has rated um, as five and a big thank you and i hope you enjoyed today's session okay thanks and uh, uh, keep in touch and uh, yes we will be sending all the details at various platforms and in case if your question is not answered yet or it is missed out don't worry about it we are going to compile all the questions and share it uh, via email yep and guys uh, this right. session would be available on youtube for some time so you guys can go and rewatch it and also if you guys have any questions please do put them down on in the comment section our team will uh, get back to you in maximum 48 hours or probably it will be re less than that so please do put down any questions that you guys have in the comment section. Thank you very much, guys. And we'll see you guys again in the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Shivansh. Thanks a lot. Thanks, team. Thanks, everyone.